Hi everyone, I'm Tandy Gutierrez. I'm founder and creator of unicornwellnessstudio.com. Um, unicornwellnessstudio.com is a membership-based online wellness center anchored in 30-minute mat-based workouts, a monthly guided meditation, and new and full moon tarot readings, all based and written within a four-week cycle format in accordance to the current lunar and astrology cycles. It is a community filled with incredible women sharing their personal magic in all kinds of ways. Each month, I feature a unique unicorn and share her story, why she gets on the mat in meditation and in the tarot on a weekly basis. We explore how it supports her expanding her particular magic in the world and why she'll never go without it <laughs> in the community and its practices. Please meet Mama Judy Jones. Hi, Mama. Hello, hello, hello. What a pleasure and privilege. How are you? I'm so I'm excited. Well. I'm well, well, well. This is, like I said, this is a pleasure and a privilege. So thank you. So good. Well, will you tell us about yourself and your work, your life and your career? I have been really excited to have you as a featured member. Um, We'll probably get into why and how long we've known each other, but please share you and anything you'd like to tell us. Well, I would like to say that I am a product of a wonderful, wonderful world. Okay, no how you slice it, I still as a wonderful world. I sing that old song, What a Wonderful World. <laughs> and um, with the ups and downs and ins and outs, I teach, I inspire and I connect young people and old people to their future and to their dreams. And that's what I do as a, as a retired teacher. I'm married to my husband as of yesterday, 43 years. Yee! Same cute dude. <laughs> Somebody shared a picture with me today of your wedding. It's so cute. Yes. And with that wedding picture, of course, I have our motorcycle picture that we just bought a trike three years ago. So we are motorcycle people as well. Um, this year, I'll turn 73 in August. And so I am excited about, you know, having that little seven-year-old still in me in 73. Um, I have two adult children. And Paula is a unicorn. Yay, Paula. And Paula is one of our featured members as well. So I love, there's an interesting like souping that happens with our featured members. Um, another featured member, Paula brought in and I let him know that she, and they, he was like, what? So it's all family around here. <laughs> Amen. I love it. I love it. Um, so that's Paula. And then she's a massage therapist. And then I have Ruben, who is... Um, a general manager of uh, Car, um, CarMart, and he has three children. I am a wonderful grandma because um, my kids are like, so I'm a great grandma. <laughs> um, I also have a company called Kansas Academy of Theatrical Arts, and that's where children from all ethnic groups, all economic background in Kansas City, Kansas City area come together and do theater in the summertime. I live in an area that doesn't have a whole lot of theater for children that's accessible to most of the children. And so that's what Kansas Academy has been all about for years and years. Again, we teach, we inspire, and then we connect these children to their future. We use theater, we're educational theater, and we use it to make sure that kids um, love school, love learning, and then succeed. Um, I had wonderful how beginnings. Long you, how long have you had that academy? I've had the academy now for 30 years. So I now have the children of the children That's in my academy. Easy. Yes, 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 yes. And so that's really been been an accomplishment. Again, another stepping stone for others to see, um, to inspire people that you can do this, you know, and inspire others. Um, let me see. I grew up uh, in New York City, right where you are, Tandy. 
Um, I grew up I grew up when I grew up West Side Story and Bye Bye Birdie were just beginning on Broadway, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and I also grew up where um, in the South Bronx, where there were plenty of uh, gang activity. And so my mother recognized my leadership and I had an all boys gang. Something's got to be done. And that really taught me how to listen. Hmm. Because my mom said, as a leader, you've got to be able to listen to people. You can't just do your own thing. Leaders listen. And so it was from that experience of my mom learning that um, I had the leadership. I just had to be directed in the right direction. Um, that I came to realize my leadership abilities. And um, I came, my mom said, okay, we're going to put those leadership and performance abilities into something positive. And that's when she put me in theater in New York City. Wow. So I spent um, most of my junior high and high school days um, doing off Broadway theater. Um, that's what brought me into um, what they saw, you know, regulated. Regulated all my, all my energies, all my, just like we do on the mat, regulating <laughs> these energies, regulating these, <laughs> these um, uh, attitudes all in the same place. And so that's Performers are no strangers to the map because I have a background in theater as well, as does Paula, as does do a lot of our members actually, you know, whether it was professional or not there is very much something to be said for channeling these energetics mm -hmm. and working with them um, mm -hmm. and learning how to balance them with yeah. these tools. So very connected. Yeah. Always connected. I, I, um, again, I had, uh, <laughs> I had so much to learn about listening because I was such a big mouth. Well, I guess I still am. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> because I had learned so, you know, I had to learn so much about listening. Um, listening is part of what has gotten me through these latter years of my life. Yeah. And um, when I was in pain the first time, many many years ago, my knees, um, the spirit just led me to go back and take ballet classes mm. when I was fifty years old. So sisters, just let's do it. And I literally, I literally went back to ballet class with the, you know, nine, seven, eight and nine year olds because it was the basics. And, you know, we all looked the same. I had a little pot belly, so did they, you know. We were great, we were great together. All the techniques the same, right? Yeah, all techniques I love it. Okay, so ballet and theater are in your background, but you've got other things in your background too. Yes. The other thing and the other place where I learned to listen was in the Marine Corps. Right. And um, I joined the Marine Corps because all of my singing gigs in California were gone. And so I went in to join the Navy band because I'm also a singer. And um, the Navy recruiter was gone. The Marine Corps recruiter was there. And he said, um, you have a college education? Well, yeah, I did out of default. Um, that's a whole nother story. But um, I did. And he said, okay, if you can remember, you'll be one of 11 black female officers in the entire Marine Corps. So I said, where do I sign? You know, yeah. and became, uh, became a, a, a Marine officer where I learned more about listening. Of course, it channeled my leadership then, you know, Marines, Marines, Marines. That was the perfect fit. <laughs> my big mouth and aggressive, overachieving personality. Yay. <laughs> I love that. Oh, gosh. So um, that's, where I, that's, that's where I learned to listen. But I also learned to breathe. Breathe and listen. I learned to breathe because... There were times when I was scared. There were times when I uh, was a part of the civil rights movement. And that, those were scary. Do you think these times are scary? Those were scary times as well, because we were trying to show people what needed to be done. 
And uh, that was where I learned to breathe. In the civil rights movement, were you in New York still? Yes, I was. Yes, I was. I, um, in the civil rights movement, that was before I joined the Marine Corps, way before. Mm -hmm. um, I went to uh, City College of New York, had the first open enrollment program that this country knew. All colleges were private back then. And so they opened, uh, they opened the enrollment for 100 students of ethnicity, and I was one of them. Because my mom was an activist and she had an inside groove on a lot of the things happening. And so uh, when we found out that City College of New York, along with all the other colleges, were not allowing certain ethnicities and certain lifestyles, we took over the campus, the southern part of the campus, and held it for, I think, a month, close to a month. And it spoke, it spoke, and it spoke. But after that, at least, you know, people of ethnicity could swim in the pool and could also... <laughs> And yeah. remind our viewers what years or what year that was. Yes, I mean, we're talking, you know, we're talking the 1960s here because yeah. I was born in 47. And so when I was in college. We're talking 1960s. Yeah. This is, uh, this and is, I know we think that's so far away, but it's mm, not. Not at all, but not at all. Um, my mom uh, paid and took one course per semester for 18 years at City College and graduated when she was 68. Oh, you, okay, so you shared a photograph of her and her cap and gown with me and it will be shared in our newsletter for Unicorn Wellness community members. It is so stunning. Number one, she don't look like she's 68 um, and you don't look like you're 72. Um, I didn't realize that she took like one one course. course per semester because she was working, yeah. raising my brother and I, using her ingenuity to um, keep my father in the home because back then African American males had a whole lot of difficulty. Mm -hmm. And so that is the kind of resiliency, that is the kind of breathing in life that I've had in my life. You know, you gotta breathe through things, man. You gotta breathe through this pain. You gotta breathe through these circumstances. You gotta uh -huh. put that tummy up and breathe. And by the way, this breathing thing, I have used for all of my vo voice students, all of my acting students, and they have come out better singers, better actors, actresses and actors because of this technique that they wouldn't otherwise have because, you know, they wouldn't take Pilates. Right. And, I was uh, kind of forced to. I didn't do it by choice either. Right. Yeah. But the fact that it helps them, the breathing itself helps them um, and uh, helps them to, uh, to project better, helps them to, to heal all kinds of things so that's that's the power of the breath is really huge i mean that's one of the things that i've learned and learned more and more of i mean i've been a practitioner of pilates for like 25 years or something crazy at this point that was never intended but the breath work gets more and more interesting mm -hmm. and as a performer and a past singer breath is so powerful to calm and to exude confidence exactly you know like this double whammy of it that i love that it's been this through line for you in the breath um you've just had like the most incredible life i mean covered a lot of ground <laughs> as a civil rights activist um as an officer in the marine corps um and in the theater and just as a woman in the world can you speak just a tiny bit to like like you said you were born in 1947 um and this transition through civil rights through feminism you know at the very least earning the right to vote i mean you have witnessed it personally because there i know that's like a terrible question to try to nutshell but any 
wisdom to offer through that? Like, what do you think of things now, I guess would? Here's what I want to offer, especially to women who are in the in between, okay? And I say the in between, because those women who are now in their 30s, 40s, and 50s, basically 40s and 50s, um, I want to apologize for my error because we have not been able to hand you a rightful baton. You guys have been kind of on your own spiritually, on your own um, emotionally, you know. Somehow my baby boomer generation got caught up in a lot of different things of wanting to still be young or whatever. But, and so I would want to say that coming through all of these things, I realized that we must keep growing together. My mother used to say, we have to hold on to each other. Yeah. We have to, and see, not only was I a woman, and I am a woman, but in the times I came through, I was a black right. woman in America. Hello. These things have a lot of layers, but we all have a lot of layers. So we have to hold on to each other. And we have to nurture each other. The Bible says older women teach younger women. And so now y'all are coming to the age where it's time to keep passing this on. So we love about the community. We keep passing this on. I think that's on. really astute because, I mean, the baby boomers catching a little flag from our generation, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to be able to do. Do you feel like, I mean, this is just a, just a question, that you all um, were kind of tired. I mean, as a as a woman of color, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like I have lived through the civil rights movement. I have lived through, you know, the feminist movement. I just kind of done. Can I just live for a little bit? And that's really what happened. Yeah. And what's ha ha what has happened. They, you know, they, we decided that, listen, I made, I made it. Y'all come on, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but it should have been, I made it, let me help you. Yeah. You know? and, and so that's what I have promoted all along. But, you know, when I walked into, when as a 50-year-old, walk into a little nine-year-old nine class, that's saying, you know, Grandma is here. Yeah. You know. Um, She's I'm still here. learning. She's still you know? doing. Right. And I mean, many times I have to ask, is there a mama in the house? Hello. This has come up twice and from like in these featured members, like in this last week. Okay. And I have on the back end, you can ask Mateo cause I've hooting and hollering up and down. Where are the mamas? Where are the women? Where did they go? And I feel like there is some anger and frustration and because we've had lots of conversations on the back end that we're not fully having right now. Exactly. But you know, my frustration was like, you have these movements that were so powerful and really got us to a certain stage. And then everybody just took their hands off. I mean, everybody took their hands off the wheel. And then my personal generation has this assumption, I think grew up with the assumption that things were fair, <laughs> that things were, you know, like handled. And it's like, all of a sudden we like, we're waking up and I always offer that I graduated from a women's college that gave me a very different perspective in my twenties and thirties, like exceptionally different perspective in my twenties and thirties that even in my forties, I'm finding people don't understand the history or the reality of things. Exactly. Exactly. And that was one of the key reasons that my daughter Paula was in the same college that you were in. Yeah. What that specific reason that her identity would not be stolen as she attended any other college. Right. You know? Or utilized in unfair ways. Exactly. Like, like yeah. I think that it's like smart because you knew and, and smart to guy. I mean, you are so smart. Um, but also just really practical as a mama, like you take responsibility for your chillings. And I mean that because it's like some of the mamas are, I mean, it, I, this is not about judgment. This is about a busy modern life that doesn't support women and in particularly women of color. So, but here you'd like, it's like you kept a little scruff on the back of her neck and, and I'm just <laughs> like, to <laughs> this day. Um, and 
Yeah, I think it's really great. So before we transition into another topic, why don't you share? Because I introduced you as Mama Jones. I have always known you as Mama Jones. That's why I call you. I cannot get anything else out of my mouth. And the fess up of like, we've known each other for over, you've known me for over 20 years. Like you've seen me grow up. So why Mama Jones? (laughs) Mama Jones came as a result of one of Paula's close friends, and um, she had a dysfunction within her home for her father. And so every time she would come to the house, she would say, oh, there's Papa Jones. And so it was initiated with him as Papa. And um, I've had the privilege of growing with this man for the last 43 years. And so uh, he is very different to me, which is wonderful. And so as he became more and more, the spirit in me said, okay, I guess I need to be more of a mom. But not just known children, but children who are looking for that kind of combination in their lives, that mama spirit, okay? Um, The mama spirit of God is called El Shaddai, the many-breasted one. And so that's really what my calling then became, that which would nurture all kinds of children, no matter what, no matter matter how, (laughs) okay? And so... The, it became then, that's when it became a calling, like, okay, I need to, um, I need to rise to this occasion. Um, and then, of course, my mama called from eternity and said, yep, get it together. <laughs> she checks in on you a lot, doesn't she? Yes, she does. Yeah. She does. Yep, get it together. <laughs> Is that really what inspired you to found the Youth Academy? Yes, ma'am. That is exactly what inspired me because I realized that there were children who not only did not have a concept of 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 teamwork of uh, but they had a lot of acting out. You see, I was acting out as a gang. You know, gang. I was acting out. So my mom said, "Okay, you're going to have a special place to act out." And so that's when I began to gather young people, like my own children, my, my own son, who uh, turned out to be a wonderful father, uh, was attention deficit, oppositional, uh, you name it, he had it. And, and poor Paula, we didn't even know she was um, dyslexic because my son was so <laughs> much. But that was the calling. And, and so I was called to all children like mine. Yeah. And, I love it. Okay, so in that transition, what called you or brought you to unicorn wellness paula of course (laughs) paula said mom my friend from college has this online workout thing i'm like okay being a marine you know i never stopped working out because that became it became it it really does become a lifestyle um but then after my knees started going uh, my knees went bad in the military but then after I left the military and my knees were getting worse and worse I was like you know what I'm not gonna stop working out and um and when Paula introduced me um I became more and more consistent because I saw that it included breathing listening and growth breathe, listen, grow, that it promoted all of those things that I was using to teach, to inspire, and to connect. Yeah. So that's what drew me to it. And she introduced me to it. Did you have any resistances to it? Of like, it's not for me, my age, my knees, it's what my daughter does. It's a silly name. (laughs) (laughs) I think main, I think the most resistance probably was when I actually started doing the workouts, you know, I was like, okay. And I would just laugh because I'm like, whatever. She's doing that crazy stuff. I am not doing that. Right. I'm not doing that part. So, 
but um, it, it, that I think that was the most resistance when you know when the stuff started getting a little crazy. I'd be like, right, right whatever. <laughs> okay, so this is like a perfect talking point because we have this huge array of members, you know, from like age range wise, um, and that then you have me as a teacher who is showing different variations, but also coaching that it never needs to look like mine, that's not the point. Um, that it's always about meeting yourself on the mat and listening to the cueing, doing as much of the cueing as possible and allowing yourself to listen, like to breathe, to listen and to grow, right? And, and to get better over time or to be able to go, that one's not for me, prob may not ever be. Although I don't believe that. I think there's always variations. But how did you get, you know, you are an incredible soul in person, but have you gotten more comfortable with things over time? Are there things that you can do that you didn't think you'd do because you're like, well, she just said to try. Well, that, that is the part about listening. I started listening to the little cues. Okay. You know, listening to the big cues, I have finally learned, but I started listening to the little cues and the little cues is what helped me get to the big stuff. I was like, oh, so if I pull my belly button, if I breathe that correctly, then I can reach that. Yeah. Oh, if I, then that will give me more. And that's really what began to sell me for consistency. <laughs> that's important. Um, that sold me for consistency. Okay. Because uh, I wasn't sold for consistency. I was like, okay. When I think I need it, I'll be there. But otherwise, I'm good. But then I began to listen to the little cues. Okay. I began to listen to the, okay, now pull your belly in. Okay, now squeeze your butt. Okay, now, you know, just the little, the quote unquote side cues. Yeah. But it's those side cues yeah. that help me with consistency because then I thought, oh, wait. Now I get it. <laughs> so, because you were definitely in that place of like, oh, I don't know about some of these things. Right. I don't know if I can be consistent. And consistency is is the whole thing when it comes right. to, uh, to working and out. You just so, kind of like hang tight when there's something still that you're like, yeah, not doing that. And just wait for the next bit. I do. Not only that, because, and we'll talk about my injuries here yeah. in, a, in a few, but not only because of that, but because I realized that as I grow and as my body grows, there are going to be certain things that I'll adjust to get the same results. Okay, so I've been consistent long enough now that I can go back, when you do one thing, I can go back to something else you did yeah. at parallels that movement in yeah. my muscles and get it. And so, um, consistency is really what has helped um, yeah. because now I have a, a, a library in my brain of okay that movement is this that's what's stretching this and um, that works. Okay and so do you know because I didn't go look it up how long you've been a member now? You know what <laughs> I had to look that up myself I didn't oh, really <laughs> remember. Um, I don't but it's been I know it's been more than five or six years. I was going to say, I think it's around that five or six mark because yeah. I know that Paula wasn't at the very beginning, but close to it. Yes, she was. Yeah. And then you weren't far behind that. Mm -hmm. So you've had a practice with me on the site for about five years. I think we could squarely call it that yes. for sure. Yeah. So now let's talk a little bit about like, okay, so like general practice, people may think it's not for them or their age or injuries. And you're like, just hang in there, listen to the small stuff, like trust Tandy, listen, breathe, and, you know, and, and, and grow on that. Um, you've had some significant injuries that we've worked through both in alignment sessions online, but also a lot in email. Oh my goodness. A lot in email. Um, <clears throat> First of all, um, let me just take this uh, and run with it for just a bit. Yeah. Um, um, on August 13th, 2018, I woke up with a back with back pain from three bulging discs in my back, in my lower back. Three horrible, ugly bulging discs when it looked on the MRI. I didn't have any injury. I was just 
that just happened. Okay, I just woke up and I couldn't walk seven steps from the bed to the toilet. I was in excruciating pain. I have a high tolerance for pain. So when I'm in pain, my husband takes me to the hospital. I mean, and I rode to the ER like on three occasions in happy baby pose. I mean, just legs up in a happy. That's how much pain I was in. They couldn't do anything for me. Um, they, they did everything. They looked at this, they looked at that. And so because they could give me drugs, I'm, uh, right. they could give me drugs. No, I'm sorry. I didn't think of that. They could give me drugs. <laughs> they could send me to the surgeon. Yeah. <laughs> um, I did have injections that eased the pain, um, for, you know, so that I could at least stand upright. So I emailed you. You responded with a prescription of progressive um, exercises that I went through. You talk about little by little, itty by itty, tiny by tiny. Because when I realized that I just had to listen, because I had laid on top of that. I have to read it because this is how much of it. I had already had tiny writing, bone on bone writing, line tight in my left eye, osteoarthritis in my whole body, iritis in my right eye, and I'm attention deficit and old. Okay? <laughs> so I'm like, um, it's over. <laughs> this is over. <laughs> yeah. I love you, Tandy, but I mean, this is over. L let me just get upper body strength to do the wheelchair thing. I'm so serious. <laughs> and then yeah. Paula yeah. called me and she goes, really, mom? Really, mom? You're really going to give up now, right? Really, mom? Okay. Well, being the Marine, I was like, oh, no, 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 no. So then I, be I went back to the consistency. Um, the exercise and I started breathing and listening to the but I mean Tandy we're talking tiny by tiny and I've progressed to a cane I progressed to being able to walk more than 10 steps um, I progressed and now I'm back it's you taken have to a hold it. Yeah. yeah I just had my alignment with you you can see you know, and people say, well, is your pain totally gone? My pain is at a, such a, um, such a uh, handleable level, especially as I grow stronger, you know, is a big deal. No. Yeah. Even the yeah. surgeon, after six months, okay, I'm going to put this in there. After six months of being back on the mat with the prescription, the surgeon said, and I quote, after seeing you for in the last six months, if, and to see the progress that you've had, if you were my sister, I wouldn't operate on you. So this is a surgeon who, that's what they do, you know, <laughs> thank God. And so this slow but sure breathing, I mean, it just, it just worked for me. It just worked and it's still working. But I, it has nothing to do with my age. It has to do with my brain. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the Pilates method, uh, this is a great place to share this because some people don't know this, was created as a rehab program. You don't have to be injured in order to do it. It's not necessary. But it was created by Joseph Pilates, who was a nurse in World War II. So it was created by a man for military men. Mm -hmm. you know, back out on the field faster, but better, like for, for sustainability. So it is the baseline of what I teach is created to heal a body in those ways, but it's particularly excellent for um, spine issues, for disc issues, um, you know, to, to give it that support. And I think this is really powerful. Like I had a hip injury way back, but the same thing they recommended, you know, I had a surgery, then I had issues with it after my pregnancies and they recommended surgery because he was like, I don't know. And I said, 
And he goes, you've probably done all the homework you can. And I thought, no, I teach all day. I actually haven't really done my own homework. <laughs> so let me try that. <laughs> Did the same thing. Took me about six months and I went back and he goes, you don't, there's, I wouldn't recommend the surgery at this point. There's no need. And so out of personal fear, I will do anything to keep myself out of surgery because I've had multiple injuries and issues. And the same thing when clients come and they go, well, this was the diagnosis for this, depending on what it is. I'm like, no, no, no. Give me three to six months. Six months. Cause it is small and it does go slowly, but let's see what we can generate and heal in that period of time. And, and you're, speaking so plainly and so beautifully about it of like the, there's still pain there there's still there's disc issues there you know so it's going to be there but whether it gets exacerbated whether it requires surgery these are huge things to stay out of absolutely and how does your body feel now when you you know for whatever reason need to skip the mat or choose to skip the mat is that an option now well <clears throat> It's not an option for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have to roll out every morning yeah. before I work out. I have to roll out every night before I sleep or else I will be, you know, what I don't, they have a thing of at nighttime when arthritis works up all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. But when I roll out, that, but it's consistency. I can't stress that enough because after you get a certain age, sometimes you slack off, whether you are working or not working, whether you're retired or not retired, you slack off on self care and you must keep a consistency. Yeah. And so I have right now, I have to roll out every, if I don't do anything else, I have to roll out, breathe. I have every morning and every and every um, nighttime. So those are something that that's not an option for me because I want my body to stay, you know, I want my muscles to keep the memory. So because like when you don't, is there pain or you just feel when like I don't, when I'm, when I don't, I mean, I don't know what word to yeah, use. Yeah, I know yeah. how I feel. It's just feel like, Ugh. yeah. When, when I don't, the circulation goes wacko. It's just like, you know, when you don't clean your, when you don't clean your, your, um, your tub and all that stuff, it builds up. Yeah. Okay. All that stuff builds up in your veins and in your circulation and circulation is everything, especially when you're old. Oh my Lord. <laughs> right. Circulation and lubrication, those joints. Right. And what people don't realize is that I was in a period of time when I taught Pilates and being a trainer and a coach of seeing the transition of, um, medicine like of western mm -hmm. medicine treating it with you know back issues with like don't do anything don't move and then the, the research coming through of like actually that's the worst thing you can do because the more we move the more the synovial fluid that gets to the joints and the more lubricated the joints are so movement's really essential but again like in your lifetime you've seen so many transitions of what you should do what you shouldn't do it's even same in mind for how we treat back pain and back issues um but yeah it's hugely important to keep that movement i just wondered if you'd really experience that of like if i skip or if i don't do it and not only if i don't do it um does it affect you know um my my pain level quote unquote yeah. uh, my pain management but it also affects just my bleh you know whatever that whatever name you want to give bleh that's what it affects, you know, because I just don't, you know, I don't feel well. When yeah. I go to the doctor, they said, what is your um, health goal? I said, I want to have a sense of well-being. Yeah. And when you don't have a sense of well-being, that's bleh. And when I don't do it, and there are times when I rest, yeah. okay, that's very valid. But there are times when my body says, I don't want to. And I said, I don't think so. Get on the mat. Okay. Because I want that sense of well-being to return. And it doesn't take the body long to, um, the body's very resilient. Yeah. But you have to build it that way. And I've yeah. built my body to be resilient as I built my spirit to be resilient. I had to with my yeah. background. And so resilience is, counts. But longevity counts. Longevity counts. Consistency 
and just keep at it. You know, I say do it scared. Do it angry. Do it. I have a less eloquent way of saying it. Yes, what? Well. <laughs> but do it. <laughs> but even <laughs> Nike had just do it. Come on. Right? I'm like, I'm going to say it in front of Mama Jones. I always say, like, do it half assed. You know, it's better right. than it's right. better than not doing it. Like, that's this right. Is one of those places where when you do it half assed for a little while, it actually mm -hmm. just starts to get better. Then you feel good and then you're motivated to keep doing it. Exactly. Um, and half ass, you know what? Half ass is still half ass working doing something. <laughs> So I don't, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I really, you and I could talk for hours. Yes, Do you find that your peer group moves in the same way, has the same level of wellness that you do at these ages and stages? At these ages and stages, it is, um, it really is, a, it's really criminal how many of people my age don't have the kind of sense of well-being um, that they could have. And, um, and that's why I'm, you know, trying to hand this baton to as many young men, young men and women, you know, fifties and up, because, uh, once they get to their sixties, they, the culture has says that they're old. And right, which is so wrong. I so, wish we had recorded your last alignment session because it was this week. And I thought, we mm, should have recorded it. Because, you know, you're like, well, I think there's this and I think there's this. And I'm looking at you going, sister, you do not know how fit <laughs> and strong and capable. And I'm like, you make these little tweaks for a few weeks, like you're going to make progress. And I think we, we, I know as women over certain ages, it's shifting for sure, but just been sold a bill of goods. This is all downhill. Well, that's the truth. And the sold a bill of goods is really where we're at at this point, you know? And so um, I think that it's time that as a community, as a health community, that we start. We have a, because we have a different bill of goods to sell, especially in this season right now when people are just inside let me tell you even my husband is looking over his shoulder at what i'm in because he's watching me every day <laughs> <As I'm laughs> segue to, like, to our last official question um because we are filming this during the pandemic during self-quarantine shelter in place stay at home times um unicorn wellness a unicorn wellness practice how does it uniquely support this situation and support you in this situation well the 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 one fun thing that i've been able to do every morning now is that paula and i work out together via video yeah you know and um i i uh, you're in kansas city and she's in brooklyn yes yes yeah. that's right so that's one thing that has really come out of it. But also, um, my husband, who just, he, ha he had both his knees <laughs> put, um, you know, operated on. And then just recently in January, he had a fall and um, had to, and his, you know, had to rehab that. And he has been more consistent, okay? But examples of consistency, <laughs> read examples of consistency, whether it's in your husband, your kids, your animals, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, no. And so I think that that's what's most important, that in this season, that we have to be examples of consistently exhale. Because a lot of folks, they're still holding their, they're holding their breath with this COVID. They're, mm -hmm. they're like this, they're holding their breath. Yeah. And, and Tandy constantly says, breathe. And that's why I wanted to title this Breathe, because we have to breathe through this. We have to breathe. And the breath is what makes you stronger. I mean, my core is stronger just because of the breathing. Because there was a time when I was on my back. That's all I could do, Tandy. Yeah. All I could do was listen to the cueing and do the breathing. Well, I couldn't put the I want to say this because this is an interesting thing that has come up with so many. So I was a trainer and a coach in, you know, fitness facilities and in home. 
then when we launched an online offering, I, as a trainer was like, how's this really going to work? You know, because I was used to being there with people and I have heard more and more specifically from when members and clients are injured or if they have chronic illnesses that have um, relapses or they go through symptomatic phases that they will just lay and listen to it. I have never prescribed, you know, like <laughs> offered this. It has come out very organically and I find this fascinating that it continues to come up that it's like I'm just going to listen to it because the power of visualization one is huge but two just listening to the cueing and thinking about your body and remembering to breathe and the power of a um, full correct breath is so powerful on the physical vessel absolutely and so that's the that's you know in this time we have to exhale we cannot be, we can't hold our breath out of fear, okay? We have to hold on to each other and listen. You know, we have to listen to those who are in distress and, and feel, feel with them, right? you know, walk with them. We have to listen to those who, who need our listening ear, if that's all they need. Yeah. We have to listen to the children because they too need to hear our, our laughter and hear our joy. Um, and then we, we will grow through this, like it or not. We will grow through this. Like It's like being pregnant, you're gonna grow. Right? <laughs> Something's gonna result out of this, one way or the other, we will grow. Well, you've had some practice, to be fair, and these are things we talked about on the back end. It's like, you've lived through a lot of things that you're like, oh, this ain't nothing. Like, it's something, but we're gonna go through it, you know? Yeah. If and again, you have lived through so many things and grown through so many things. Um, does the, just out of curiosity, does the practice add something to this? Because you're well practiced at going through difficult, so you're like, I live it. Um, and you've had this practice in place already, but do you feel like, what if you didn't have this practice in this period of time? How do you think it would look different? Well, I can tell you how it looks from those I, around me, my age, you know, the elders in my age, it looks for them, you know, they couldn't do things before. Now they really can't do things. So it doesn't look better. You know, the end, uh, they don't have as much light. I'll put it to you that way. Oh, that's a great much light yeah. Then, okay. So the practice now, you know, is giving me, is, um, is fueling my light yeah that's beautiful the practice is fueling my light yeah. because there are others that need to see this light they need to and that's what's going to help them grow yeah in light okay it's going to help my kids grow is seeing light all right and so that's what that's what the practice is doing for me right now i'm gonna pull a little something out here at one point this couple years ago you kind of pulled me aside and you whispered in my ear. I will never forget this moment. And you said, <laughs> you do know that you are an activist and that what you do is much more than what you do. And I thought the Oracle just spoke to me, <laughs> like, but I didn't recognize that until you said it to me. What, were you trying to make sure I knew or I why? Wanted, I wanted to make sure that you knew the depth and height and width of your effective presence. The depth, the height, and the width of your effective presence. That's what I wanted you to know. You made me cry today. Um, you have very much been a mama presence to me. Um, and I am ever so grateful for your presence in my life. I, I don't know what more to say about that. <laughs> um, is there anything else you would like to share today with our listeners, with our members, with those who are unicorn curious or I don't know anything 
I um I just wanna I wanna open up my heart and open up my life. Feel free to, you know, put my email there, um, my 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 messaging. They can find me on Facebook personally, as well as um, you know, go to my website and press donate for these kids who uh, don't have theater in their uh, lives, even in their high schools, they don't have theater, and, and so uh, press donate. But um, that's what I want to say. I want to say, please continue to breathe, continue to listen, but most of all, continue to grow. So beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing you and for being a unicorn in the world. I love you very much. I love you too, darling. Um, and for everyone listening, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and head to the links below to connect with Mama Jones in all the ways that call to you. Plus, explore unicorn wellness through guest access, once in a lifetime chance, but we always offer 30 days as a guest to explore. You could um, embark on monthly membership. The Unicorn Wellness Handbook is available on Amazon. And if you have the Kindle app, it's downloadable for free. And also if you're interested in magical mentoring, small group coaching with me or a personal session, there are so many ways to, I'm gonna steal it, to listen to breathe and to grow into your wellness that Mama Jones and I are both here to help facilitate that. So go explore her site. If you feel called to it, please donate. And we love you very much. Thank you for spending this time with us and we will talk to you again soon.